I want to try to illustrate the life with God in contrast to the life without God, otherwise known as death, in relation to sin without it sounding religious, if that's possible. An analogy, I want to analogize it to, in the world, there is freedom and there is tyranny. And people will, well, actually, some want freedom and some, in essence, want tyranny. They won't say they want tyranny, but they'll, they'll want guarantees of certain things. They'll want to know they can have this or that. It usually comes to some sort of security, something that amounts to protection. So they, they seek that, and they're willing to make the exchange of whatever that requires, and it almost always requires giving up one's freedom. That's what you give up. You, you make a decision, and say, someone like me who believes in the Constitution and believes in freedom and liberty, and that people should have the right to make their choice, because in a way you can choose your own bondage or whatever, even in a free society you could choose to have someone enslave you, not a government but, because that would be illegal in a free society, but you could choose to have someone enslave you if that's what you want but it's, you might say, it's sinful for someone to, for the sake of their protection for their security for their, whatever it is, their desire and peace of mind, they're willing to surrender their freedoms, because then all of us have to. And because everyone has a say, if enough people say that's what they want, then everyone loses their freedom. And that's why we're not a democracy, because a democracy is just mob rule. A democracy says if uh, two out of three people say the two get to take what the, the one has, <laughs> then there you go. That's why we're not that. We're a were a representative republic. But anyway, they analogize that to life with God. We lost that life with God that was given to us in the garden due to sin. And the word sin is so much things attached to it, and especially not to non-believers in their minds. When I was a non-believer, I just saw it all as just, everything is bad, everything is ugly, everything I do is wicked and terrible. And it's not so much that being the case as it is why that is the case. So in other words, they had perfect freedom. They had total freedom. And they chose to trust in something other than their God. They chose to trust in themselves, which they perceived to be freedom, but it was a misperception. It was, actual, it was actually bondage. It was tyranny. That's what they were buying into. They were fooled by this. They were fooled by the notion that this would bring freedom. And it was in denial of the reality of what they had. I'm not here to make excuses for them. Although they were deceived by a practiced, or at least a, a very skilled deceiver. So there was this process whereby they chose tyranny. It's more about a freedom versus slavery concept as opposed to our idea of what sin is. Because sin is basically just bondage. Because you can say you're free, 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 but if that manifests itself in doing a bunch of things that makes you sad and lonely or hurting, and you say, yeah, I no one stops me from doing anything I want to do. I, I'm totally free and sad and wondering why life is so empty. Well, you just discovered what the fall is all about. It's similar to in the government system where now we're going from freedom, which seems scary to a lot of people, I suppose. It's very scary and risky, but the, yeah, I know it's not perfect analogy all analogies broke break down when compared to god but it's, it's it has a similarity freedom has the ability to succeed and to have some sort of peace and when 
the tyrant comes along and promises all this so-called freedom, free to do whatever you want and not pay for it, well, that's a lie, obviously, because you will pay for it. You'll pay for it because human beings aren't designed that way. They, they won't appreciate it. That story has been proven over and over and over again throughout time. What I got to do is look at a place where people don't own anything and aren't responsible to pay for anything. They destroy where they live. And sadly, that's kind of where America is going. Hopefully, it can be stopped and reversed. I don't know. But the point is, that I am trying to make is that the tyranny of the devil was, you can do this. You can be free and self-sufficient by your own wits. Just learn. Just do good. Don't do bad. And you can be like God. You can be like Him. So why would you need Him? That's the temptation that He offers. And it's still here in this world today. And people choose it. They choose it in the secular world. They choose it in religion. Because in religion, you can have that form of freedom, so-called. I did my penances. I did my duties. I did my responsibilities. I did all of them. I am now free to be loved by my God. That's one way. That's the tyrant's way. You never get there. You, you, you think you do. They give you the list. You fulfill the list. Maybe you don't like their list, so you go to another decorated facility. They give you a list that's more suited to you or easier for you to accomplish. You accomplish that list. You do everything. You're doing it. Hey, man, I got this down pat. And you're still empty, if not downright miserable. Whereas God, God who truly gives freedom, when he says, you shall know Jesus and Jesus will make you free. Oh, excuse me. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. If Jesus therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Jesus is the truth. So if he's the truth, he's everything I need to know. And since I can't do it for myself, he just did it. He did everything so that I'll never have to stand on that quicksand, on that shaky ground of wondering if I've done enough. So I just do more and more and more and more as though I could possibly do enough, enough or overshoot it, as I've heard it explained so arrogantly that, oh, yeah, don't, don't just do enough. Go way past as though we could. The one who did it, did it so perfectly, there's nothing we can do to compare to that. He finished it. He did everything that I need to do to be complete, to have peace, to have love. To have acceptance. He did it all. So he didn't do it. So I could then therefore say. Okay now I know how to do it. The the 613 commandments weren't enough. Now I got this new way. Let's do it the Jesus way. Now he did it on my behalf. Your behalf. All our behalf. So we could look at it. And believe in it. And trust it. And have that peace. His peace. Not the peace from your efforts, not the peace from trusting in what you're doing. The peace that only comes from what God and God alone has done. And he finished it. And that's freedom. That's freedom from the tyranny of whatever is out there, whether it's the world or religion. I know you can have a certain amount of happiness, I guess, for a season, as they say. But there will be no peace. There will be no true joy. There will be no understanding of being loved and accepted by doing that which you are told, even if it's by yourself and your own concepts, and you construct your own your own fiefdom by what you think is right. It's never going to feel right, because you weren't designed that way. You were designed by a designer, 
and he's jealous. I know it's offensive to a lot of people. I don't find it offensive at all. I find it wonderful. He's jealous for me. He's not going to let anyone fulfill me like he can. He has all the missing parts in his hand, or the one missing part if you want. You know, the that cliche, there's a God-shaped hole in our hearts. That's fine. However you want to put that. He's the only one that's going to do it. He's the only one that can do it. He's the only one that makes you free. He is the one who brings liberty. And he destroys all tyrants and all tyrannies. And that's all you got to know. Trust in him. Seek him. Rest in him. And receive that perfect love. And be free. In Jesus' name. Amen.